this is the this is what the um, the the framework looks like, the static framework. There is a, a an online active one where you can click on all of the courses and take a look at all the technical electives, and I encourage you to do that. But you can see, so that's the um, that's the two year one. So this is what the one year model looks like. Can you see that now, Matt? Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, um, can't hear Helen. Obviously, less structure. Uh, but you can see you've got your data analysis, instrumentation, mechanical design, you've got a research methods or enhancement unit. And then, um, so the, uh, just so that you know, Eng, Eng 5008 work integrated learning, that's the internship. So you can either do the subject that is entrepreneurship or you can do an internship and that credits you with, uh, with uh, a unit's worth of credit. Um, you would obviously work on a project during that internship for the organization or entity that we um, sign you up with. And then there'll be a reflections piece uh, at the end of the um, internship proper. And then you can see um, we've got a couple of other units here as well. You've got a second research, oh, okay, or an enhancement unit. Yeah, okay. So those, you can see those two fourth, the, the, the fourth unit in each of the first and second semester, you've got some choice there. So the other yep. six units um, then are fairly structured with the exception of um, the first in semester two, where you can choose between entrepreneurship or the internship. Yeah. Yeah. So, what was um, your what was your mark like, mate, from RMIT? Uh, it was above seventy. Good stuff. I can't remember the exact number. Good stuff. Definitely above seventy. That's, that's good. Um, that's good. So yeah, potentially I would consider the, the one year option. Sure. In terms of the potential employers in the the um, the internship. What's the best way to find, I guess, those potential companies? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, Helen, uh, can you can you speak? Are you? Oh, you've come in. <laughs> still can't, <laughs> still can't yeah. hear you. <laughs> I did get I did get the links. I saw the links. Ah, oh, good on you. Thanks, Helen. Yeah, look. Um, okay, so look, there there are a range of companies um, you know we obviously we have uh, the research council grants and centers of excellence that we run you know we do have those for materials and um, um, for membranes and uh, we have bioprea and that we have um, spin-offs and there's all sorts of things that are going on through our research and um, and then we have uh, other uh, specialization areas such as um, the Institute of Railway Technology and they do consultancies all over globally. Um, uh, and then of course, um, given that we uh, have both the continuous professional development requirements for the bachelor students that is aligned to the accreditation with Engineers Australia, and uh, the work integrated learning um, activities for the master programs. We, uh, you know, we have, uh, we have people that are working constantly with companies um, to get them on board for all of the things that we do in the faculty, whether it is research or um, um, commercialization tie ups, um, or uh, this uh, uh, engagement for our students because you know the company we have a, a full fully um, fledged co-op program too which is a model we borrowed from north america our dean is uh is from ubc in canada and she's brought that over where students actually go and work as engineers well um, pre-accredited engineers for three months so i guess um what hello hello yeah there you are what there we... i am here i am <laughs> What we, what we do is um, for your internship, for example, we would just look at your profiles. You know, obviously you're from RMIT, you've got your mechanical, I'm um, presuming you pursue, you pursue your mechanical um, Master of Advanced Engineering at Monash. Um, you know, if you've got companies that you're interested in, sure. I mean, we can't make any guarantees, but of course we would work for you to um, get you uh, linked in. Um, mm. You never know some of those companies, we may have links already. I guess that's the point I would make given the breadth of what we do. Uh, and then, um, you know, we can help um, introduce you. Um, I, I'm, I'm, Helen, I'm guessing um, the student experience team and the work that Nicole's team does 
um, in, in these cases, uh, often the international students will need our support for companies, but then when we've got domestic students who you know, have ideas about who they want to work for, we can offer that support. Yeah, certainly can. So yeah, we've got the student experience team. Um, you might also find if you get involved in um, stuff like our teams and our clubs and, and um, you know, our motorsport team or our um, Nova Rover team or something like that, uh, they often have industry nights as well. And so people will come in and then, you know, make connections and network that way to um, end up in in your work, integrated learning or internship placement. So there's lots of ways to do yeah, it, but right. certainly the student experience team's there to support you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So um, we've got about 25 teams. I don't know how you did at RMIT, but it's probably, I think, what we know of, of the other universities, you, you guys uh, do well with the industry engagement and projects and doing your final year projects for companies and stuff. But we have a lot of teams and that's how um, our students do their applied learning. So uh, could you, have you got the link there to the Teams page, Helen? Yeah, I'll not, find I've it got it. Okay. No, that's right. Okay. Um, it's a, yeah, it's, it's, it's their applied learning approach. I mean, obviously you don't need the hour, the continuous professional development hours uh, because you're accredited already, but you know, you're welcome to get on the team, um, get on one of those teams. Uh, you've got a bit of experience, so you'd probably be well received. And yeah, as Helen said, there are sponsorships, um, they're tying to companies, you know, and the like. And the, I mean, the motorsport team um, has some excellent connections. Um, given their given their current status, so yeah, that's um it's another way that we can um, help you out. Of course, companies come you know the big the big multis um, and Australian companies come to campus. <clears throat> they do that a couple of times a year through our Careers Connect. Our Careers Connect again, you'd have this at RMIT, but we have that service that um, helps prep you for employment when you graduate. Databases of companies. But I mean, I mean, you can do a lot of that desktop research yourself. But the point is, is that that's there, and they're the ones that organise the graduate fairs. So the big companies come onto campus, and you know, um, you can talk to them as well. So yeah, it's a variety of ways. Yeah. Um, when we when were you thinking, Matt? Uh, I obviously haven't fully decided yet. But uh... yeah, fair enough. Obviously, it's a bit all over the place at the moment. Yes, it is. Seconds. So we're, we've, we've uh, moved to what we call fully flex learning. So students are basically doing um, their content online, including their shoots. Obviously, they can't do labs, but uh, we're sort of back ending that. We've got a, a, a summer semester that's going to be available for students to catch up on their first semester's labs. And we will... I reckon at the current rate for second semester, they'll be doing labs um, over the summer as well. So that's how we're handling that. But look, you know, you can, you can um, obviously being local, it'll, it'll enable you to return um, to campus if you were to join us and we will be having students in um, on campus in second semester, but it's going to be staged. Um, it's not going to be full time. The priority is being given to first year students so that they can get that campus experience and then final year students so they can do their capstone and complete their studies. So it's kind of all, it's all going to happen, but yeah, it's, it's rolling out. And um, I mean, you know, you may, you may want to um, hold off until you can have a fuller experience and uh, you know, uh, fingers crossed uh, that the pandemic is, um, you know, kept, kept in the bottle and um, we, you know, sort of return to a good sense of normality in February. Yeah. Um, so where are we? Um, I've sent you the link for the teams and clubs and stuff too, if you wanted to have a look at that. Matt, were you involved in motorsport at RMIT? Yeah, I've got that link. Thank you. Um, only a bit. I wasn't um, there as much as some of the guys. But right, yep. Yeah. Yep, no worries. That's all good. All good. All right. Uh, so, um, is there anything else you want to ask, Matt? I guess just in a general sense, doing a master's. Well, I think my concern originally was that further down the track, I might be limited by only having a bachelor degree 
And I'm just wondering how much truth there is in that, whether or not a master, not having a master's or higher education can potentially hold you back. In the... Well, look, you've done your uh, four years at RMIT and you're an accredited engineer. Is that correct? Yeah. So that's, you know, that's stage one, obviously. So, um, you know, you could try and pursue uh, your stage two chartered engineers accreditation. Uh, we don't offer that, um, but uh, the, the course that you would take in Master of Advanced Engineering, you'd be able to get credit towards um, pursuing that stage two, but it's not gonna give you the full accreditation. Look, um, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, this is why people choose um, whether they um, undertake um, other um, graduate studies, such as an MBA, you know, uh, probably over time, you know, do MBAs contribute um, to your uh, career opportunities um, through, uh, you know, promotion and through salary? Well, a lot of the research suggests they do, but, you know, there's always devil in the detail and you need to um, look at the data set that they are uh, um, taking this from. You've got to look at the institutions. Um, I mean, you know, you can do an MBA at so many institutions. I imagine a lot of them are, are pretty, well, let's say they're average, right? Um, no doubt if you're looking um, at a group of eight university in Australia, you know, that's certainly your best bet. Uh, in terms of uh, um, getting another qualification, um, it always looks good on on your um, on your resume, and of course it probably helps enable you um, studies in other countries, um, um, work opportunities in other countries as well. So, yeah, there is that there, there is that to consider. I mean, um, I I would suggest the majority of our um, domestic graduates at, at Monash. Helen, you might have a view, um, but I think the majority just uh, when they uh, graduate from their four years uh, and they've got their registration, they've got their accreditation, they just cut loose. Um, we see those return probably who have an interest in academia and research, but I think beyond that, I mean, we, we, we get some in for um, master studies, but it's not, it's not, it's not, not a large number, that's for sure. Helen, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, yeah, we don't we don't get um, a huge number, but I suppose too, Matt. It depends on what you know, what your career outcome you're looking for. Whether you're trying to diversify a bit, or whether you just want more, because this is a real deep dive into what, as Jamie said before, into what you have done as your undergrad. So whether you want more of that, or yeah, whether you want to diversify a bit um, into other areas. So yeah, I suppose it kind of depends on the industry you're working in and what you're wanting to do with your career. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you want to do you want to stay an engineer and sort of all get into management, or what, what? How do you see things, or are you just sort of still feeling it out? Still feeling it out at this point. Uh, yeah. yeah, fair enough. It's quite a big jump from university to work, so I'm just trying to mm. gauge what industry I'm best suited to. Um, yeah, it's just quite a difficult transition. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. just trying to decide what I'm most interested in, I guess. You see yourself continuing as a practicing engineer or? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. I mean, the work that we do and the research that we see, you know, uh, it's a great profession. It pays well. There's high demand. Uh, you know, initially, of course, it's always tricky. Um, but, you know, after a few years, uh, you'll uh, you know, be getting, uh, moving up the ranks. Um, so you've just, you know, you haven't graduated, you haven't been out too long. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, having a master is given that a lot of students can get the uh, bachelor professional accreditation, having a master's, you know, gonna help. It's gonna, um, you know, place you um, a cut above in most instances. You have a bit of competition, there's, um, uh, a couple of unis that are doing this, the, the uh, standard, uh, you know, Bachelor of Science undergraduate, and then you do uh, engineering at the master level, such as the University of Melbourne. But uh, yeah. by and large in Australia, I think most of the engineers are going to be bachelor holders only. So yeah, that, yeah. That'll, that'll, that'll certainly help you. Uh, but you know, again, it's what Helen said, it's what, what, what you, what, it's not easy. 
you know, but where do you see yourself? Um, you know, are you interested in management or are you interested in continue? That's why I asked, do you want to continue to be an engineer? So yeah, all that sort of stuff. But that all, you know, you'll fil filter all of that. Um, have some discussions with colleagues and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Engineers Australia, all of that provides good resources and uh, leads into uh, reaching your potential.